Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to my beginning inter interactive fiction with Twine and Sugarcube video tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be covering variables. Variables are critical to creating really immersive and awesome interactive fiction. And if you haven't worked with variables before in, say, other contexts, like such as Harlow or anything else, I'll give you a quick refresher to them. Variables are used extensively throughout any programming language. And essentially, you've already used them before. You can think back to algebra class. Can you imagine when you had that problem where A equals 2, B equals 3, and then what is A plus B? Well, the answer would be 5. The, the, value, the value 2 is being referenced by the letter A, and the letter B Reference, references the value of 3. And basically, whenever you see an A or an B, you would substitute what those values what those values are. Another way to think of it is imagine is you have 20 bucks in your pocket and you go to buy something and you look at the price tag and it's 10 bucks and, you, and someone asks you, do you have the money to buy that? Well, that thought that idea of money is referencing the actual amount of 20 bucks that's in your wallet. So when you think of your own money in that context, you're taking that thought money and substituting it with the actual value 20 bucks. And then when you see something say that's 30 bucks, then you know that you don't have enough money to buy that item. Well, we use variables, like I said, all the time in Twine. For instance, you may want to know what the player's name is. You may want to know if they've completed a certain quest, if they've opened a certain uh, opened a certain door or completed a certain puzzle and so forth, and you would use variables to store that information. You may have the variable for name to equal the player's name. You can say, do they have if they have the sword, you could create a variable called has sword and you would place a value for that. Now the values we can add to variables are come in three different types. The first is text and it text, you know, could be anything. It can be a name, such as my name would be Brian, or and you can substitute any other player's names. The next value you can use is a number, and this can be an integer, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or it can be a decimal point, like 1.5. And then the last type of value that you can use is a Boolean value, and a Boolean value simply translates to true and false, and you would use true for true and false for false. It's very simple. Okay, so the question is, how do we use variables in Twine and Sugarcube? Well, you can see here, I have my Twine open, and I'm gonna open up this brig here. And you can see when we last left off, we played around with some formatters. And you can see here, we have stand up and stay on floor. Well, we can create a variable. Let's say we'll add one down here. And the way we do this is we use this, this less less sign here, and then we have the greater greater sign. Remember this, anything between these stands for a macro. And we're going to use the macro of set. Now we're going to give a variable name. And we're going to start it off with a dollar sign, like so. And you can call the variable whatever you want. In this case, we'll just put name. Then I'll use equal sign. And I can just say, my name is Brian, like so. Now I've set the variable name to Brian. And wherever that name is being used, then the value of Brian will be substituted. The question is, how do we print out that value? Well, we have a print macro like this, and I can just type print and then provide an, a name like so. Now let's see this in action. I'm gonna build and run the story. And you can see here, we have the name Brian because it's storing that value in, the, in that variable and then we're printing it out. There may be times when you want to get rid of a value. For instance, you've set this variable and for whatever reason, you no longer need it. Well, you can use the macro called unset and then just put in the variable name like that. And now when we print out the name, the name will print nothing. And you can see we have the name Brian, but there's nothing else because we've unset that variable. If you're coming from Harlow, this may seem a little bit weird, this equal sign like so, but you can also use the vet, you can also use the keyword to set name dollar sign to Brian like so. And I'm just gonna delete these over here. 
and it works the same exact way. Personally, I prefer to use the equal sign, and this is because I come from a programming background. If you find using two much easier, then you should use that. But if you're going to, but if you're planning to work with other programming languages such as JavaScript, then you should probably get in the habit of using the equal sign. The equal sign is really an assignment operator. It assigns the value, and that's what it means. And the two is just a shorthand for the equal sign. Okay, I mentioned the other types. Let's put another type. We'll call this money. And we'll say, we'll say 100. If I have $100. And now I can, we'll delete this here. And we can say, we'll use the print macro. We'll provide the name. And then I can put has. And now I can do another print macro like so. And put money like so. And now when I play, you can see Brian has $100. Right now, the way we're using this, you may have some limited applications with it. But once you start working with choices, and basically you start making choices based on the value that variable contains, things can get really interesting. Now we also have Boolean values too. So we'll just put a value awake equals to true, like so. And then we can put is Brian awake? Actually, to go in the spirit of things, we'll just use the print macro. And now we'll print out this value here. And when we run this, is Brian awake? True. Typically, you'll use these in these conditional values. Is the player alive? If so, then do a certain path, and so forth. So far, we've been using macros to print out the values of variables, but you can just implicitly print them out as well. So first, let's get let's set our value like so. We're going to use set, and I've deleted this by accident, and we're going to set my name to Brian again. And now I can just simply type name like that. Notice I'm not using a macro, and then when I click the play button, you can see here, it just says Brian, and that's pretty helpful. There's going to be times when you want variables saved, no matter how many times the player restarts the game. Let's say, for instance, every time, let's say, for instance, you want to have a death counter. You could do this by using the remember macro. Let's do this now. Let's create a death counter. And we'll do this over here. Let's just say water flooded the water flooded your cell and you died now we want a variable that will track how many times the player has died and to do this we're going to use the remember macro we simply type remember and i'm going to give this name death count and here you can see i've put the first part of the word in lowercase and the second one i've increased i've just increased the capitalization here and this just makes it easier to see and then I'm going to do a plus equals one. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Now, each time the player comes here, death count will be in incremented. And then we come over here and we can just write, you have died. And we'll put death count like so times. Okay, let's play this. Here you can see you have died death count times. What this is doing is that right now Twine doesn't even know about the variable death count. So it's just printing out the name death count like so. When you get to understand working with conditionals, you can check to see if that variable is set. And that way you wouldn't have to print this out. Let's stay on the floor. Okay, water floods your cell and you have died. We're gonna restart here. We're gonna click okay. And now you can see we have this again. Let's restart, let's see if it's picked it up. Stay on floor, restart again. And here you can see you have died one times. What is the implementation of this is a little twitchy. and Twi the SugarCube developers recommend that you don't use it. And you can see in this case, it took a couple times before the browser would actually recognize that that variable was set. And also, there's going to be situations where somehow the cache of the browser that runs Twine is going to be what is going to be cleared and you're going to be losing those values. But that said, 
It's there if you need it. But think of it more as a last resort sort of thing. Okay, we have the remember macro, but we also have a forget macro. And if we come up to stand up, let's just use the forget macro. We can just do forget, and we'll say death count. And this will simply get rid of that variable. Now, if I run this, and it works just like unset, we, you can see we have died one times. And now if I stand up, we go to restart, and then bam, we're back onto death count like so. Okay. Let's go back here. And I mentioned I was going to talk about this plus equals and what this actually means. What this does is it takes the value of death count, incre increments it by one, and assigns the value back to death count. Essentially, this is what you're doing longhand. You're doing death count equals death count plus one. Now, if we think of the value of death count is, say, 10, then we're taking death count like so, and we're saying 10 plus 1, which is equals to 11, like so. And then when we print out death count, it's going to say 11. So we're essentially, so we're essentially doing a few operations here. And this is plus equals 1. And again, you could always do something like this as well. And let's give this a shot. And you can see you have died death count times. Okay, let's restart this. And let's do this again. And now we have died one times. So death count equals death count plus one is really lo a long-form way of saying death count plus equals one. And that's the basics of working with variables. We're going to be working with variables throughout this series, so it's really important that you get comfortable with them and get an idea how they work and so forth. Once you start combining variables with choices and, and loops, you can really add a lot of power to your games and create some really cool mechanisms. And by doing this, your players are going to love you for it.